You got the partial spoiler up and running here for Dimension Force. I'm back 30% of you guys who have not smashed Love Your Crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can get to 105,000. So your Dimension Force breakdown here. Remember, OTS launch is 518. Sneak Peek Weekend is going to be 514. And remember, this set now has that 419 price tag that none of you seem to have believed. And we have no details as of yet on in terms of the Starlight Rares. All right, now... What we do know so far is the Libromancer is in fact a secret rare. We saw that last night. We got super rares for the Performa Pal stuff, which I think is fine leaving that in better ratio slots. I think will make people uh, very, very happy here. Uh, the other three on stuff we don't know rarities for, I have a feeling it'll probably be floating between common and or ultra. We do know that the plant and the big machine for Thurion are going to be seeker rares, which I think are going to be your main driving points for this set. To be honest with you, like if there was a selling point on Dimension Force, not only is it the Preda Plant stuff, but it is definitely going to be the Thurions, just strictly because of like their incorporation ability into other decks, and the fact that as a standalone deck, they can kind of do some pretty cool things. We also know that Vice's Star Frost over here will be a secret rare. It is not marked a secret rare on this list because it is the sneak peek promo, and very traditionally here we do follow that same pattern here of that. And then of course we know that the the Scareclaw is going to be an ultra rare. Uh, nothing that we know in between that. And then the big thing here on this list that was like the biggest shocker last night was all the Predaplant stuff, or at least the bigger ticket items that we saw are going to be common from this set, which I'm, I'm actually very, very, very happy about. Um, also, the punk card got renamed to Deer Note or something like that. Um, that's interesting, but that's also an ultra rare. Also, there was no sign of Illegal Knight last night, so we don't know if Illegal Knight gets a name change. We don't know if it's going to be a common or whatnot, but to be honest with you, I, I think a super rare would probably be very appropriate for Illegal Knight, but the thing is, Illegal Knight is one of the cards that is one of the things a lot of players are looking forward to out of set. I mean, it's another level of crazy interruptions that you give to the Brave engine. And we've already learned here that anytime you give Brave way more stuff than you ever actually should, yeah, the deck is just stupid good. Um, outside of that, that's pretty much your first wrap-ups here. We get down here into the Albaz fusion line here. And we do know that Albaz Renitus is a secret rare. I know a lot of people were like, oh my god, it can search for, you know, Fusion Destiny. Yeah, yeah, it can. And it's pretty cool. I, <laughs> the reason why that card is one of the more broken interaction points here. We also do not have a stated rarity on the Dinomorphia. We don't have a stated rarity for the Starving Venom fusion monster that you see there. We also don't have, on the bottom line here, we don't know a rarity for Psychic End Punisher. But if I had to guess, Psychic End Punisher will probably end up being a secret rare, because that card is that good. All right, and then what? Immortal Dragon's a super, and then the uh, the other dragon's an ultra. Not too happy with the dragon being an ultra for zombies, but all right. The Heroic Challenger is also a super rare. And we also don't know the rarity yet for Magnifica, which... This is kind of one I wanted to see. And we also don't have Beyond the Pendulum yet, but we did get the Scareclaws a secret rare. So I guess they want those more generic cards to kind of fit the bill in terms of, um, yeah. It's always like the good generic cards that Konami always wants to put into these higher rarity slots. So that's your first chunk of like confirmed rarities that we have so far here. As we move on along here, we did find out that the Sylvan Link Monster actually was confirmed super, and I'm actually pretty happy about that. Um, considering the fact of all of the very good plant support that we have coming down the pipeline here, I think a lot of people are going to be very, very happy to get their hands on this. Yeah, it, it didn't necessarily like give an entire new wave of support to Sylvans, but as a generic Link 2 for that works generically with plants, well, I'll include that there. The card is really good. Extra Pendulum also is a super rare. You know what, Konami? You know what you were doing. You knew the Pendulum players would be the main ones to go after this set, and you maintained a good chance for people to get what they wanted. I also do think the weather 
<clears throat> side note here, I think the Weather Painter monster, the Link, will probably be super rare to match Forecast, just considering the fact the Forecast was a super rare. Because, I don't know, I kind of think if they're going to leave that as a common, that's just a big old disappointment. Thurion Saucer also is an ultra rare. You can tell that Konami is looking at in terms of the value for this set, 100%. I mean, that and what, the Scareclaw Field Spell Ultra Rare are both um, ultras. So I guess the, the new thing is to make Field Spells Ultra Rares. Uh, we got Zombie Reborn as a super rare. Since, you gotta remember, the zombie theme was one of the bigger things in this set. Like, it had an entire dedicated article um, just straight out of the way for their support. And you could tell that Konami was emphasizing it. So for that stuff to get higher rarities, I'm not surprised about that because they're deeming it as a selling point. Heroic Energy was a super sure. We already talked about weather forecast. I think that's it for that line. As we shove on down here, the Super Arthurians cross. Yeah, Branded Exile is a super rare. You know, Branded Exile is a super rare to match kind of like the rest of the branded stuff. It feels pretty all right. I'm not going to complain about that at all. Like, you got your cards, you want them to look good. Scareclaw Slash is a super. And then the, the Dinomorphia Trap card being an ultra rare. I don't have a particular problem with this. I know that some people have an issue with seeing... Uh, the Dinomorphia stuff being higher rarity, but I mean, like, you're only going to really want to splash this in terms of, um, like, the, what, the rest of the, the, the deck into Albaz? So, unless you're trying to get, like, super cute here, um, you know, you're trying to, like, play pure, we don't even have the Zark stuff yet. We have no idea when we'll be getting History Archive stuff in the TCG. Hell, like, that set is so barren at this point. I assume that that'll be, like, a Brothers, uh, uh, like, a Legendary kind of set later on in the year. That's, like, our only point window here that I could see us actually getting that. And until, you know, that ends up happening, uh, it's just meh at this point. Now, what we do know down here for exclusives and imports here... Now, we do know about the Navy Dragon. I talked about that thing last night. I think it was actually pretty good in terms of popping. All right, we also got a new fusion pendulum that's very, very generic. It's literally just two pendulum, or excuse me, it's just two pendulum monsters to make it. Uh, Triff can now get cake made for him as he's getting super polyed. All right, good generic super poly targets are very, very interesting in this game. And I will give them credit uh, in terms of design for this. I didn't think they would actually do this. Also, the fact that it's a super rare is very nice. We also got all the Libramancer stuff, which I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, we also got the Mort... Oh, God, we got the Mortar. We got the Ghost Breaker uh, discount Kaiku. Uh, and then we got what? The Ghost Conductor, the Odd Eyes Wing Dragon, which we should have had a long time ago. And then we got the Gaia other fusion monsters. So you, you got a few slots left for imports, but this set is wrapping itself up relatively quickly. Now, Libromancer stuff. Libromancer of Fire. So remember, this is the one you can reveal from your hand, special summon it, and then if it's special summon, you can add a Libromancer card from your deck to your hand. I like this card a lot. Libromancer Misty Girl. Uh, we are a level 4 with 1,421, so you can ritual summon this card with any Libromancer card. If this card uh, ritual summon using a monster on the field, your opponent cannot target ritual monsters you control monster effects. And if this card is special summon, you target one face of monster opponent controls till the end of this turn, changes its attack to zero and negate its effects. This is like the level of support we wanted to see. Like that card is very good. Actually, both of them were good. Fire burst here, 2800 on a what? Level seven? You ritual summon this card with any Libromancer card as per usual. If this card was ritual summoned using a monster on the field, it cannot be destroyed by battle, and also any damage your opponent takes is doubled. And then this can make two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. And then when a monster or when a monster declares an attack, you banish the Libromancer ritual monster from your graveyard, so it gets 200 attack points. That's what, 3k? I'm not too crazy about that. The Libromancer realized you can reveal the Libromancer ritual monster in your hands by some one fire token. It is fire level one uh, with the oh excuse me of the same level as the real card, and then while you control that token, you cannot swap some monsters except for Libra Mancer monsters. It's just ritual fodder, I guess. And then we got Libra Mancer bonded. <laughs> this card can be used to ritual summon any Libra Mancer ritual monster. You must also tribute monster from hand or field whose total level exceed or equal the ritual monster that you wish to ritual summon. A ritual summon a fire burst to this effect using fire starter on the field cannot be destroyed by battle or banished by card effects. It's actually pretty interesting. 
And then prevented, I think this is probably the most interesting card. So control Libra Mancer monster, you target one face up monster your opponent controls. This turn, that phase of monster cannot be used as material. For Fusion Synchro, Exceed, or Link Summon, they can still attribute it. You can only use this effect of Libra Mancer Preventer once per turn. And once per turn during the interface, if you control no Libra Mancer Ritual Monster, so this card of the graveyard. So they tried to give them a Floodgate, which is also pretty interesting. But that is your rarity stuff so far for the interesting set. That is Daifo. Please, if you comment to what you guys say, make sure you guys smash the crab out of that subscribe button. So you guys don't miss out more awesome content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons! Thank you! Uh! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.